Good evening, everyone. Guess who? That's right. Yours truly. The one and only Warrior Man. I am finally ready to expand interaction through my web presence. More specifically, I am ready to begin posting video cast up on my blog, Warriors Machete. And in preparation to do that, the long, 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 yes, long preparation to do that, I did not anticipate using this video cast to discuss the topic that I'm going to. But I think I should. In fact, I know I should. And so what I would like to do is I'd like to address the mischaracterizations that have grown out of my last blog post, Dead Long Before 28. And when I get through with that, I'll provide you with some further information about what's going to be happening from here on out. Those of you who are upset or have taken offense in my remarks, you begin with the premise that I don't have any respect or reverence for the sanctity or beauty of life or for the passing of a human life. And that's simply not true. In the 11 years Warrior Web has been around, I have been proclaiming the awe, the profound awe I have in the incredible gift of life and the belief I hold that every single human being is born with an equally incredible potential to do great and awesome things in their life. And for just as long I have been expressing my admiration and how I am inspired by those individuals who do those things in their life that have them get the most out of their living. Those of you who have been coming around for the whole 11 years that my web presence has been around, or those of you who have been coming around 5, 6, 7, 8 years, 2, 3 years, I know that you're aware of that that I've been saying these things, but you seem to forget that I've also been telling you it's hard for me to have any respect for anybody that would squander it. One of the most used lines around here is that we are not built or created the way we are as human beings to come here and squander it. Any human being, anyone, I don't care who it is, celebrity or bum, rich or poor, I don't care what the conditions or circumstances are of their life, what challenges they face. Anyone who chooses to throw away the gift or potential of life does not get my respect. And in the case of this young man, Heath Ledger, that is exactly what he has done. I don't need to see or read any more testimonies from those who were closest to him or see or hear any more recordings that he himself has left behind in these interviews he's done over the last couple years to know that this guy developed in the nine year chunk of great success he had in the film industry he developed some serious self-destructive tendencies and some psychological and dependency problems it's impossible not to see that unless your version of reality is the next new reality television show I didn't know who the kid was. I saw his face plastered at a couple news sites I went to with the headline Dead at 28. I went and read some of the initial articles and I got some background including that he had been nominated for an Oscar for his performance in Brokeback Mountain, which I'll address in a minute. Let me just say that there are a lot of people out there that have their panties in a real stiff wad for no substantive reason and I saw a couple news programs later that day and they showed some clips from some of the interviews he's done going back to when he first got his break in the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson and it's undeniable there's some serious deterioration in this young man's personality and behavior and it's a direct result of some substance abuse and we know about the prescription drugs right now, but my bet is that there's some stories and information that are going to come out 
where this guy is going to be exposed as a drug addict, that he was into some serious drug use. I don't need to see a toxicology report to know that there's nothing natural about this kid dying at the young age he did. I've seen a couple stories in the last few hours where the idea is beginning to be planted that he died of a natural heart attack. They can come back and say he died of a heart attack, but there's nothing natural about it. It's the damage he caused to himself through the substance abuse that he did that would have brought on the heart attack. The damage he did physically, mentally, and even spiritually. And what I mean by that is, is you know, people wonder all the time why so many of the former talent I worked with has passed away. It's not just the cocktail of drugs they took that last time. It's also the depression and dying of their spirit on the inside. Their drive, their enthusiasm, their excitement, their joy about life and the challenges it has to offer. And stepping up and using the discipline and creativity they use to uh, achieve celebrity and fame and success in pro wrestling. And take it and turn it and channel it into something else. And once you lose that, that is a bigger damage to your being than even what you do to yourself physically and mentally. But you can tell that there is a serious deterioration in this young man's personality and behavior. I don't need to see any more lab tests to know that there's nothing natural about this young kid seemingly physically healthy, living a high quality life, which I think is important to point out. Uh, there's nothing natural about this kid taking six different kinds of prescription drugs. What is wrong with us? I can't believe more attention isn't being paid to that instead of everybody sitting back uh, anticipating that there's going to be some release of some information that the guy used street drugs and illegal drugs, which he definitely did. That's going to come out. But somebody should be saying, well, hold on a second. This guy's 28 years old. He's got this incredible, successful, and uh, high quality of life, and he's taking six different kinds of prescription drugs for anxiety, insomnia. I mean, all that does is support what he did to himself on the inside, what damage he created to himself physically and mentally. To have to take prescription drugs. I can't believe people aren't saying, this isn't normal, this isn't natural. Of course, it's because of the culture we live in which I want to talk about in detail in just a little while. But when you have a drug commercial on TV every two or three minutes, and they're urging you to call an 800 number, go to a website to get your free sample fix, it's no wonder people aren't saying, well, hold on a second. You know, it, it's pretty likely that this is going to turn out, that some stories are going to come out, that this guy was into some other drugs, the illegal street drugs. But what about the fact that the kid's taking six different prescription drugs to begin with? There's nothing natural or normal about that. I don't need to see a suicide note to call it a suicide. People have written me and said, Warrior, you know, it sounds like you're jumping on the suicide bandwagon and it doesn't look like it's going to turn out to be a suicide. You're going to end up with egg on your face. First of all, I don't jump on bandwagons. I think for myself, and I enjoy making up my own mind. And anyone who chooses to behave self-destructively and ultimately brings on their own premature death has, in the way I define it, committed suicide. This whole idea that uh, it's an accident is a real stretch for me. Because so far there's no evidence that someone or something caused an accident where this guy ended up dead. He's the only character in this storyline. He's the only animated being that had the ability to go to the medicine cabinet, go to the nightstand, go to the gear bag, open the pill bottles, take the pills, swallow them. He himself is responsible, just from the perspective of prescription drug use and their involvement in his death. He alone is responsible for that. Look, I don't think that the kid 